I want to know exactly how to purchase a house with only a thousand dollars out of pocket I'm going to show that to you here in just a second these are 100% loans so in other words ask yourself this question if somebody came to you and said hey I'll give you the money to purchase the house I'll loan you 100% the seller can pay your closing cost and it's only going to cost you a thousand dollars because you got to pay for the appraisals 400 bucks you got to pay for the home inspection they want to buy a house without an inspection that's four to five hundred dollars so you got a thousand dollars you can purchase a house. You have to ask yourself, if somebody gave me that type of loan, would I have an interest in buying a house? And if that's the case, then I need you to stick around and watch this video. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it, everything to do it, interest rates, money out of pocket, down payment, how simple and easy it is, coming up right now. Now, if you haven't already done so, you may want to subscribe to the channel. My name is Wayne Turner. For nearly 30 years, I've done just about everything when it comes to real estate, buying, flipping, selling, thousands of houses you name it so i'm excited to share with you opportunities like this as we walk through this house because yes it only takes a thousand dollars to buy a house just like this one now this house just happens to be a foreclosure it's in really good shape you're probably going to be like wayne there's no way that's a foreclosure yes believe it or not this house is in fact a foreclosure now don't get me wrong the house that you buy does not have to be a foreclosure this is a foreclosure you can buy brand new homes you can buy pre-existing homes you can buy a foreclosure home the only thing is if it's a foreclosure it has to be habitable it can't be in really rough condition really rough shape because they want to make sure that you're going to get a loan they're going to give you a 100 percent loan to purchase the property they want to make sure that you're focused on just living and paying that mortgage not having to make those improvements with your money now it's important to know that you do have to have a 620 or higher credit score if you don't we can work with you we've got lenders that work with you that help you get your score up they do what they call a rapid rescore and they can show you pretty much how to get your score up in 30 to 60 days just by talking with a lender and of course there's no cost in any obligation they just want to do a good job for you and give you good service and hope that that good service conveys into a loan for you a home but yes 620 credit score two years on the job you can show proof that you can pay for it you've paid your taxes on the property you owe it to yourself to look at these loans because they are 100 percent i have agents all around the country that connect buyers with the agent you buy a house we as agents get the seller to pay your closing cost so these types of purchases cost you literally just a thousand dollars out of pocket but look it's important to know you don't have to purchase a house there's people that have never purchased a house there's nothing wrong with not purchasing a house you have to do you you have to be comfortable now i'm going to show you around this house because you're probably thinking oh what are they asking for this one Wayne? this one's just under 2100 square feet it has been completely redone it's $268,500 this home is available for sale. So lots of nice features, tall ceilings and all that. But back to the USDA loans, it's United States Department of Agriculture. So they're rural development loans, meaning that you can't be in the heart of the city. You, you can't be in the heart of downtown Atlanta or Nashville or New Orleans, but you can be on the outskirts. And that's where a lot of people like to live anyway. So if you wanna live, 30, 45 minutes outside of the city limits in the suburban areas, so many of the suburban areas are covered by this USDA loan. And that basically means that almost every house is available on the outskirts of major metropolitan cities for these USDA loans. Now, a question I often get is, Wayne, can I buy investment property? Yes, you can actually. You can buy a duplex, you can buy a triplex, you can buy a quadruplex. You can have a single family home, you can have a duplex, a triplex, a quadruplex. All you have to do when you purchase it as an investment property like that is you have to live in at least one of the units for one year. You can live in at least one of the units for one full year. After that, you can turn around and put a tenant in the unit that you've been renting. Now you can see how as a first time home buyer, you can purchase property and actually be cash flowing, actually start making money. Now keep in mind too, if it's an investment property with USDA, it has to be habitable, it has to be in good shape. You know, it has to be where people live in it. But here's what's really cool. Here's something to think about. When you buy a duplex, triplex, quadruplex, 95% of the time they're occupied by the tenants. So what you have to do is you have to look at, okay, who's the, the next person in line where their lease is not gonna be renewed? And you're going to be the new owner and they're not going to be able to renew that lease for one of the units because you'll have to move into it now the bad thing is you're not renewing a lease for someone the good thing is they can go buy a house just like you're buying a house through this usda program the other flip side of that is all the deposits that are being held with the owner that you're purchasing it from plus the rents 
all of that stuff transfers to you. So if you close on a property, for example, the first of the month, you close on it April 1st, your mortgage payment in due to June 1st. Now you may say, Wayne, I don't want nothing to do with that, but I would buy a single family home. And I say, hey, do you, man, do you buy a single family home? You can buy a house just like this one. It backs up to woods on a dead end street, $268,500, 2,100 square feet. It costs you no money out of pocket. Now, another question that you may be asking is, Wayne, can I purchase a house with my fiance? my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my son, my daughter. Yes, you can do all of that. You can actually purchase houses together, but you both have to meet the same criteria. You can't like own a home and have a paid for home and then purchase a house through USDA. You can't do that. If you already currently own a home, they won't let you purchase a home this way. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not for first time home buyers but you can't own a home. But if you've owned a home in the past, because listen, people go through situations and circumstances, they go through divorce, they've sold a property, I used to own a home, and now if you don't own a home now, you can purchase a house this way. The rates are the same as if you are going out and getting a FHA loan because it's underwritten by the FHA guidelines. So the closing cost that I'd mentioned, the seller can actually pay the closing cost and it runs around three and a half percent of the loan amount. In this case, it's a USDA loan. You're getting 100% of the value of the home in the loan. So whatever you purchase it for, $229,000, that's what you're getting the loan for. And the closing costs are gonna be based on that. Now, keep in mind, the seller can pay your closing cost and they oftentimes do with no problem whatsoever. But you just have to know that you have to ask for your closing cost because if you don't ask for all of the closing cost, you do not want that surprise at closing. And listen, a good lender, they're gonna show you what to ask and how to ask for it. Now keep in mind, a good real estate agent will also know that same thing and they're gonna show you exactly what to ask for. They're gonna show you everything, why you need it, why you need a title policy, why you need home inspection, but all that is covered with the seller paying your closing cost in these USDA 100% loans. So you wanna make sure you get mineral rights, you wanna make sure you get good insurance quotes. There's still a whole lot that you have to do when it comes to purchasing a house. And that's why I say, listen, home ownership isn't for some people. It's a lot of work, it truly really is. But when you look at purchasing a house, for example, say $300,000, and you have a 7.5% rate, well, you're gonna pay $203,000 in interest over 30 years. And that's like mind blowing, right? So you just bought a house for three, you're paying seven and a half percent for 30 years, you're gonna pay about 203,000 in interest. Now you got 503 in it, but here's where you win. Here's where you win. The whole time you're living there, it's gaining equity. And a good conservative number is 3%. So if a property's gaining 3% in value accrued yearly, 3%, for example, for 360 months, 30 years, that property has a projected worth of about $843,000. So even if it cost you $503,000 to purchase that property over 30 years, that property is now worth $843,000. So then you have the option to keep it and live in it. You don't have to pay a mortgage or rent. You can sell it, take the money. You don't have to pay capital gains. It's been your personal residence. You can do whatever you want to with it. Or three, you can turn around and rent the property out if you want. The choice is yours. Now, a question I often get asked is, Wayne, can I do this on a single wide trailer or a single wide modular home? You can't, cannot, but you can do it on a double wide modular home. So people question me and say, Wayne, what is a modular home or a double wide or they used to call them trailers. They're pretty fancy and nice now, but you can do an FHA and a USDA loan on those properties. The difference is, it has to be anchored to the ground. It has to have what they call a permanent foundation. So it's gotta have underpending and it's gotta have some concrete footings and it's gotta have the wheels off and it's gotta be secured to the earth just like a stick built house. Now the other question that I get is, Wayne, is there a recapture period? Do I have to pay some of that money back? The answer is no, but you do have to live in the property and have that property as your personal residence. You can't have that property as a lease or investment property. You can if it's multifamily, as I'd mentioned. So if it's a duplex, quadruplex, uh, if it's a triplex, you can put renters in it or in it, you're good, but you have to live in one side for at least one year. 
Another good question is, Wayne, can I buy a house if it's in a flood zone? And I know a lot of people are like, buy a house in a flood zone if you don't live in a flood zone or been around a flood zone. And people are like, what is a flood zone? Well, a flood zone basically says that at any given time that land could flood and they have different variations. So you have flood zone A, B, C, and X. And you have to also understand that 25 of the states in the United States border the ocean. So there's a whole lot of properties that are in flood zones. But the answer to the question is yes, you can purchase the house. The house that I'm walking through right now, it is in a flood zone. The living area is on this floor. It's completely open below like a basement. Uh, although it's not under the earth, it's just raised. And that prevents water from getting inside the, the home itself. And that allows you to purchase houses like this in flood zone as long as they're raised above the base flood elevation. Now, of course, you have to have flood insurance and you also have to have homeowner's insurance on the property. You have to have both of those if it's in a flood zone. And you also can't have a really high deductible. Your, your deductible cannot exceed 1% of the insured value. So if you bought a $200,000 house, you got a 1% deductible, Lord forbid something were to happen to the property, you'd have to come out of pocket no more than $2,000. That's what's really important for people to know when they look at these insurance policy and deductibles make sure you, you don't have such a crazy high deductible. Well, with a USDA loan to be able to purchase a house for only $1,000 out of pocket, like I always mentioned for the appraisal and for the home inspection, you can't have a deductible over 1%. Now you may also ask Wayne, how do they determine how much home you can purchase or is there a limit or an, a maximum amount of home you can purchase? It doesn't go off home price at all. It goes off your income and not your adjusted gross income. It grows off your gross income. So in other words, if you work for some one company corporation and you're making $100,000 a year, well then you're making $100,000 a year and that's what they go off of. So what happens is in most cities, counties, states if you will, it's around $110,400, but it absolutely varies per county and per state. You can go to usda.gov by going to usda.gov, you can actually look and see what those limits are, because it's gonna vary per state. If you're a household of four or less, then it's $110,600. If you're over a household of four, so if you're a household of five, six, seven, eight, then at that point, it's over $140,000. Now that touched on most of the big rocks when it comes to buying a property this way. You can buy investment property. You have to have a 620 credit score. You gotta be two years on the job. You gotta have your tax return, show proof of income, all that stuff, right? If you have any more questions, you can go to contactwayne.com. My team and I will personally reach out to you and book a five minute call. There's no cost, no obligation. We'll be glad to talk with you a little bit, answer any questions that you may have. My name is Wayne Turner. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel. It helps us get the message out to more people like yourself who deserve to own real estate.